hey what's happening forex traders what's happening people now guys today once again i i want to share um i want to share um a story with you guys today as to how i was able to get a billionaire an african billionaire to invest in my trading um whilst i was actually still in university um during my early days of trading I want to share with you guys today what I said to him, what exactly did I present to him because I know a lot of you guys are at the process whereby you're probably looking for investors, sorry my hand is hurting me, you're probably looking for investors to invest in your trading and you just don't know how to go about it. So today I want to share with you guys this life changing experience because for you to be able to get somebody to invest 1 million US dollars with you, you know, you have to have a certain level of skill set. So I'm going to sit down very soon, but before I even get into the nitty gritties of the video, whereby I start obviously outlining the entire story, trust me guys, it's a very interesting story. Um, I, I, I met one of the richest men in Africa and um, he, he invested a million dollars with me. So I'll share with you guys what I said to him, where I met him, um, you know, how the whole meeting happened and what it feels like to meet an actual billionaire that's listed on Forbes. So guys, well, before I do that, I want to take you guys outside. Let's see. All right, guys. So once again, this is where I live in Dubai. Just wanted to quickly show you guys the view from my apartment. I have a pool literally outside of me. This is my view every day. Um, this is where I usually kind of like like to trade from so that I can see all of this pretty beautiful. And over there is the park um where i usually go to spend most of my evenings so it's a really 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 beautiful place um so i just wanted to show you guys where exactly it is i live why i keep paying two thousand dollars a month um in dubai so this is pretty much outside so guys let's go inside now so guys welcome back inside of the house um i'm sat here now and i can finally get, deliver this story to you guys so sit back and relax it's going to be really interesting as always i always recommend that you have your coke and your popcorn beside you because I can tell stories for days and the thing is I can tell you step by step how exactly everything happened I have a very good memory so like I was saying earlier guys I want to tell you guys how I was able to raise a million US dollars from an African billionaire so for those of you guys who are watching this like I said earlier you're probably thinking I want to take my trading to the next level don't really have money okay or you're thinking what is the long-term game for me in forex i'm not going to lie to you guys the long-term game for you in forex is at the end of the day you have to take on some funding from an investor if you want to make it big okay and trust me i wanted to make it big i came into this game because you know i i wanted to live the, i wanted to live a good life i wanted to drive fast cars i wanted to live in the best city in the world as you can see i live in dubai now so so earlier on in my trading career i knew for a fact that you know one five hundred dollars isn't going to make me one million dollars i needed to take on funds from an investor but the the way i was able to secure these funds was actually by coincidence okay but you see one thing you need to understand is opportunity always favors the prepared mind because it was already premeditated in my mind when i eventually met the billionaire you know things just kind of like moved a bit more smoothly now over to the story itself so this must have been about 2014 june i think it was june july and i was in the, it was summertime in 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 the uk uh coventry for like i said most of you guys know i spent some kind of part of my my life in the uk i went to coventry business school so I, I must have been in the gym so i was in the gym working out it's summertime i'm working out so in between my reps right i must have opened my phone for those of you guys who go to the gym you know in between your reps you just want to check your instagram but at the time instagram stories wasn't really popping it was snapchat so i opened my snapchat and i found that a friend of mine had posted with the african billionaire now for the sake of confid confidentiality i cannot mention his name um but if you listen to the story you'll probably be able to figure out who the person i'm referring to is okay so i opened my phone uh, i saw she posted a story with uh, she posted a, a a snapchat story with him oh my god oh my god african billionaires yeah, blah, 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 blah. i was like you know i'm in the gym i'm like yo this nigga is here man he's in my city and being the being the person that I am, um, you guys know I'm, I am of an African descent. I'm Nigerian, okay? And one thing about Nigerians is 
We're very hardworking people. We take advantage of situations. We, we, we will definitely go for it. And as with most of my African brothers as well, shout out to everybody in South Africa, Uganda, wherever it is you're watching this from. As an African, because of the fact that we know where we're coming from, we never allow opportunities to slip by our hands. And that's why I'm telling this story, so that you can prepare yourself for if this kind of situation arises. Because most of the time, the situations whereby we run into opportunities like this, but we just don't know how to take them. So, being the being, being the bad chef guy that I am, you know, I was like, I left the gym, you know. So I called my friend. I was like, Yo, listen, I'm hearing that this guy. So we call him Mr. Billionaire, right? Let's for the sake of the video, we'll call him Mr. Billionaire. So I was like, Yo, Mr. Billionaire is in Coventry. He's in town. Um, what's gonna happen? He was like, mm, Okay, uh, okay, what are we gonna? I'm like, Listen, dude, I need you to do me one favor. I need you to meet me because they were at the cathedral. Okay, <clears throat> it was graduation. He had come into town for his niece's graduation. Nobody knew he was coming, right? This is, don't forget, this is Coventry. Um, so I just told the guy, I told my, my friend, I said, listen, I need you to do me one favor, right? I need you to meet me at the cathedral with a comb. <laughs> he saw, obviously, I met him at the cathedral. So I went into the bathroom and I combed my hair because I, I used to have this really huge afro at the time. I combed my hair really nicely. I combed it and I was I went to the bathroom and combed it and by the time I came out they had gone into the the, the graduation the, the whole graduation ceremony had kind of like kicked off so I was sat on the stairs it was a, I will never forget this guys it was a flight of stairs I'm literally sat outside waiting for this graduation ceremony to be freaking over because I want to see this guy um, so yeah truth be told you know I was out at the time I had even I think they were in there for about 40 minutes, but to me, it just felt like five minutes because I was anxious. I, I just wanted to see him. I just wanted to feel his presence. I just wanted to, you know, these kind of things, getting to meet a billionaire, okay? Um, obviously, at the time, don't forget, guys, I am in my second year, first year of university. I am in my first year of university, and I had just figured out, I had just figured out the top-down analysis. For those of you guys who follow me on um, YouTube, you know my methodology. I am, you know, I have this top-down approach which works very well. We get about 95% accuracy when it comes to analyzing and executing our trades. I write 95% of the time, 9 out of 10 times, I am correct. So I just discovered this trading methodology in my first day. So I was feeling very frisky. I was happy. I was confident. I, I, I was like, you know what, let this guy just come out. Now, um, so obviously he comes out um, with, uh, with the rest of the graduates and because of the fact that he was overseas, he was in a different ground, he was in Coventry, he was in the UK, people didn't really know who he was like that, as opposed to if he was back in his country in Africa, right? So this was kind of like uh, an edge for me. I knew the guy, so once I saw him, I introduced myself straight away. Now you have, when you see these people, you have to be very confident, you introduce yourself, like introduce yourself like I was like hi my name is Dapo Willis it's nice to meet you sir um I probably hear this all the time but I'm a huge huge fan of your work I respect you a lot he was just looking at me and I was just kept on going blah 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 he was like all right that's fantastic nice to meet you too um okay so he was like what do you do here I'm like I, I I come to school here I introduce myself I'm like I'm a first year business management student da, 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 da. I studied your work a lot and I'm like all right cool now what I want you guys to understand here is you see what I've just done there? I just introduced myself. Now, that's the easy part. The difficult part is the next 25, 30 seconds of the conversation because you have to understand that, you see, billionaires have a very short attention span, very short, because think about it, everybody's trying to sell them something. Everybody's trying to sell them this, trying to sell them that, blah, 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 say, blah, say, blah, say. <clears throat> so, and then at that time, you know, I could, I could see in his eyes that because of everything that was going around, he was starting to get distracted. He was like, okay, this boy has introduced himself, you know. And you know, we Africans, we always either we want to sell something or we want to beg for money, right? Never do any of these things. Never see a rich person and beg them for money and never see a rich person and try to sell them a business idea on the spot. 
why shouldn't why shouldn't you do this because they keep getting they, like every single day of their lives people are trying to sell them one business opportunity or the other right so moving forward now this is i could tell from his eyes he was starting to get distracted he was almost not paying attention to the conversation so at this point i had to hit him with something very profound i had to hit him with some information that would throw him off balance so i told him straight away i was like sir um i just wanted to quickly tell you something i know you have to head up somewhere but i just wanted to quickly share something with you so i told him i'm a very young trader i started trading at the time i've been trading for maybe about four years three and a half years i've probably been trading for about, about that period of time so i told him i'm a young trader and sir i have according to my analysis i have done at the moment i can see that um crude prices are about to drop and i know for a fact that your net worth is directly tied the is, is directly tied with the stock market index in nigeria i take this again i said according to my analysis <clears throat> i can tell that oil prices are going to fall and if oil prices fall this is going to have a negative effect on the nigerian stock market which your net worth is pretty much based on so i didn't put it in such a way whereby i was kind of like threatening him but i just told him like according to my observations so i can see that oil prices is about to fall and i know what this can mean to your net worth but forget that even about net worth you see most of these major financial institutions in new york and london if they want to lend a billionaire money, they always look at stuff like your net worth, how well you've performed, and this kind of like gives you like a bargaining power to for you to negotiate your loans, your debts, your risk, and all that. So if anything happens to your his net worth, it would kind of like affect his business. He would drop in the Bloomberg ranking, he would drop in the Forbes ranking, and it would definitely like hinder his ability to negotiate certain deals. So you see. All of this came to my mind in a split second. Why? Because I'm a Forex trader at the end of the day. And I'm not an indicator-based trader. I'm not a signal-based trader. I trade the I trade the market. And you see, with the way that I trade the market, with the top-down analysis, whereby I only use technical tools that are free on every single charting software, because I can understand price action, I can look at any single financial instrument and I can predict over 1,000 pips into the future. You're doubting me? You're doubting me? You're doubting me? You shouldn't doubt me at this point because I've proven myself from January till, to, till date. We've, we've been right 8 out of 10 times. About 8 or 9 out of 10 times, we've probably had a couple of losing trades, but most of the trades I've called since January have been correct. Why? Because once you learn how to do price action properly, the professional way, you can look at any single financial instrument and you can read what exactly is about to happen. So because I have been trading, because of my approach to the Forex market, I was able to look at crude oil prices and I could tell they were about to drop. So this analysis was already in my head. So when I saw him, now this is exactly how technical analysis meet the real world so i can go out there and i could shout all your prices about to drop why because i simply did a top-down analysis now you guys are wondering top-down analysis blah 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 what's this guy talking about well top-down analysis is basically when you go from higher time frame and spit thousands of pips into the future scale down to lower time frames and trade in that direction and you bang thousands of pips if you want to learn how to do that some more the forex mastery course can teach you how to do that the link is going to be down below somewhere about here grab it and it will teach you how to exactly analyze any single financial instrument so that you can talk to anybody and just tell them listen this is exactly what's going to people will think you're a magician by the time you're done taking the forex mastery course that's the honest truth because when i told him this back to the story when i told him this he looked at me like, what the hell is in, what's the hell this little boy talking about oil prices are going to fall? Guys, don't forget at this time, oil prices were trading at about $102 a barrel. Uh, about that? Or 90, between $98 a barrel and 102 Nigeria at the time, good luck, Jonathan was the president. Spending, spending, spending. Oil money was coming in. Anytime I flew to Nigeria, everybody was happy. Dollar. You know, dollars were coming from everywhere. $108 a barrel is what the 
the, the, the um, crude prices we're trading at the moment. And then oil is literally at its all time highs. And then this little boy here is telling me oil prices are gonna drop. He just looked at me. But the fact that I was bold enough to tell him that, and he could tell the confidence in me, uh, yo, this little, this boy is serious. I was like, okay, you say you've done your analysis? Okay, um, all right, that's fine. Uh, okay, so um, so because I've told him something he's never heard before, now he wants to give me audience. So when you meet a billionaire the first time, you wanna hit them with something that is quite profound and you, you want to try as much as possible to tell them something that will make them want to see you again. You never close on the first time. Your first time is to put your foot in. Get that meeting so that you are now in a normal environment where you can now close the billionaire now forex traders hope you're listening to this when you're going to pitch your your trading forex mastery students uh, for those of you who are on the forex mastery course um shout out to you guys love you guys very much i know your trading must be doing fantastically well now after taking the course when you're going to meet your investors um I want you to, the essence of this story is actually for you guys, so that when you're eventually going to meet your investors or when you stumble on somebody you feel like you can, that can invest in your trading, use this approach. So you want to tell them something very profound. Do analysis on things like gold prices. Do, some, do analysis on things. Hit them with something profound. Tell them something like, the cryptocurrency market isn't sustainable. You'll be like, really? Why? Because everybody like cryptocurrency, everybody talking crypto, crypto, crypto. Tell them something different. Tell them the cryptocurrency market isn't sustainable. Why? Because historically, it has no, it has no, it has no, it has no data. And if you have no historic data, it's almost impossible for you to predict the cryptocurrency market in the future. Technically, you have to understand that price action is price action. So the way we use price action is we, we use historical price performance to predict what's going to happen in the future. And now if there's, if there's no historical price performance, how, can, how exactly can you predict the future accurately? See, the reason why it's easy to predict things like the Euro, USD, oil, gold is because those things have been, we have historical data from 1974. If you look at most of my trading, you find out that I go way back and my, my key levels come from way back, my, they come from way back. So, and I look at what's happened in the past and once I'm able to gauge what's happened before, I'm now able to predict the future. So like I said, Forex Mastery students, or for those of you who are gonna grab the course and eventually look for investors, remember this, whenever it is you meet somebody that is pretty well off, hit them with something, hit them with something like a bang. I don't, you don't have to say, you don't, it doesn't have to be cryptocurrency, but just say, let sound smart. You see, indicators and signals will never allow you sound smart because you're relying on two freaking lines to cross stochastics and MACD to this bullshit. Whereas you're a technical analyst, why? So you should be like, you know, why? Yeah, why? So, anyways, back to the story before I before I digress. Um, where was I? So, Mr. Billionaire was now, you know, was caught off guard, and then at the time, so he summoned his peer. Was like, was like. Told me say this thing again so i said it to the peer the peer was like I said take his number collect his number so we me and the peer exchanged numbers and but guess what guys guess something that happened they never called me yeah, yeah. <laughs> they never called me until they didn't call me until now, he flies back to his country, I'm back in Coventry, I'm, my trades are banging, I'm making a significant amount of money, I've just discovered the top-down analysis, I'm milking the market, seriously making some good money, you know my strategy is one of the best out there, I'm making, so I'm not, 2014 was my best trading year ever because I had done this big prediction on the Euro on a higher time frame and I had predicted like a 2000 pip breakout. So to the downside, and this was during the time of quantitative easing, quantitative easing by the Fed chairman at the time, Janet Yellen. Um, Janet Yellen and Ben Bernanke. I think Janet Yellen took over for Ben Bernanke. So it was an amazing year. So all I was doing literally, guys, because I'd seen the entire move on the, on the higher time frame and the market had broken out, 
all I was doing was when the market broke at a higher time frame, I was going to lower time frames. And all I was doing, guys, I was waiting for retracement and I was selling retracement. So the, I was and I was holding my position. So at the end of the entire bear, uh, the bearish run of 2,000 pips, I probably banged maybe like 7,000 pips. No joke. You know how I trade? Like when I get into because I could see the whole move. Once I was selling, I wasn't closing. I was holding it. So I was, I was looking fresh. I was looking good. So I didn't really mind. Uh, I didn't really mind um, the fact that they, they didn't call me back immediately um, because I was still making money in the market. And another thing is, please don't be desperate, okay? Have some money in your pocket when you are going about looking for investors because when you're desperate, you start making terrible decisions. You start, you start bending your rules to meet their demands. But you're the trader. You're the person who's going to be battling with the market on a day-to-day -day basis. And... If you don't have money in your pocket, whatever it is they tell you, you're just going to take and then eventually mess it up. So guys, my trades are clicking. I'm giving massive projections. I'm telling people all your price is going to... Now I'm, I'm bragging. All your price... You know when you do your top-down analysis, mastery students, you know. For those of you who want to grab the course, once again, the link is going to be down below. Um, anyways, back to what I was somewhere here. I'm going to put it somewhere here. So... You know, I'm talking, I'm saying oil prices are going to fall, oil prices are going to fall, euro is falling, US dollars gaining strength, quantitative easing, I can see parity. I'm talking, I'm telling people euro, US is going to drop to 1.000 or at least just before that. The market is going to go to parity because I've done my higher time frame. And guys, this analysis I'm talking about only took me like two minutes to do. I just woke up one day, I said, let me check oil charts, let me check the euro. And then I went to my, did my top down and in five minutes, I put my levels and... I could see 2,000 pip drop on both oil and euro USD. So, you know, this time I'm talking now, the university started figuring out that this guy knows exactly what's saying. So, I started getting invitations to go and speak at different institutions and stuff like that. Just the power of t price action technical analysis, not relying on indicators or signals once again, because you have no clue. You, ha you don't know what to say if you're relying on those things. But because I have. I could tell them the prices, at what point the market was going to reverse, at what point the market was going to bounce. I knew all the levels. I knew everything. I had my charts to back it up clean. Finance people were looking at my charts and like, this guy knows what he's saying. Because I had everything. Back to what I was saying. So, long story short, universities were calling me. I'd probably spoken at like seven different universities. I'm in my first year of university. I am 21 at the time. Anyway, so... Um, yeah, so I'm speaking at this university called uh, University of Hertfordshire, Hatfield, right? Somewhere outskirts of London. I'm speaking at the university and at the time, so this is about six months later, I met the billionaire. So I'm speaking at the university, speaking, speaking, speaking. Now within this six months, guys, best believe the breakout on oil had happened. Oil had gone, started falling from 108, 92, 80, 70, 75, came down to 50, 52, oil was tanking. In fact, my uncle from Nigeria, he called me like, yo, that's your prediction was spot on. He even wanted to give me money to trade for me. I'm like, no, 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 I'm not interested. I have my own money I'm trading, okay? Sorry, sorry, uncle. Um, so, oil started falling, guys. The breakout happened. It happened. And one thing about things like this is technicals first. Fundamentals will most likely always back up the technicals. So a fundamental news came out at the time. OPEC is always speaking. OPEC is always speaking. There's always going to be something about Iran or this or blah, 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 blah. Somebody's always speaking. But you realize that the market will react temporarily. But if the market is in a trend, you find out that the fundamental news will now push your technical prediction even further. So whilst the market was falling, OPEC kept on coming out with bad news. They were cutting production. This, that, that. No, no, no. They weren't. They were not cutting production. They were boosting production. This, that. There was a glut of this thing in the market. Um, one country has decided to do business with this country. Oil, oil prices were falling. There was so much supply of oil in the world. And like I said, I was speaking at Hertfordshire University, and yes, at this time I now had an assistant. So I noticed that an assistant was flagging me. Um, that my phone was ringing 
So I was like, okay, cool. Um, sorry, guys, this video is quite long, but you need to listen to it to the very end. So the, the, my assistant was flagging me that my phone was ringing. So at the time at which I was speaking, so I told him that oil prices were going to drop from, from where it was to $28 a barrel. This was my, my prediction of $28 a barrel. As at the time I was speaking, as at the time I was speaking, oil didn't hit 28. Oil had hit 25. Three dollars lower than my prediction. Whoa, this is the lowest oil had been since maybe the 40s or the 50s. And this kid right here made the prediction bold, like I had the chance to prove it up. And I was like, yo. So no, no, my assistant told me that oil, he showed me, brought the chart to me and they showed me, oil has hit your target that you predicted, sir. I was like, wow. That's when I really, really confirmed that my approach to trading actually did work. That how I saw the market was actually the way to actually look at the market. That's when I was able to beat my chest and say, yes, top-down analysis can work for any single instrument as long as you apply it properly. Now, the next day, I'm chilling and then my phone rings and I see the number, it's a plus two, three, four number of calling me from Nigeria and lo and behold, it was, <laughs> It was the it was the billionaire's assistant. He was like, "Hi, am I speaking to Dapo Willis?" I don't know, yeah, Dapo Willis speaking. He was like, "Okay, um, uh, Mr. the billionaire would like to see you. When do you think you can be available for you to see him?" I was like, "He wants to see me." I'm like, "Yes." Uh, he was not like, "When are you available?" I'm, that's when I'm like, mm, mm, "When am I available? Let me let me check. Let me check." Tomorrow, <laughs> no, 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 no. I was. Uh, I told them I was available Friday, guys. They sent the his private jet came to pick me up. You have to understand that Coventry is a city where they don't allow flights to land. It's, it's a private airstrip. Only the Queen of England lands there. The plane landed there, picked me up, and flew me straight to meet the billionaire. This was the first ever time I'd ever been on a private jet in my life. That was my first time I ever boarded the jet. They picked me up and they flew me to go and see this man. So when I went to see the man, um, you see, so obviously I had to wait for a couple of, about an hour because he was busy. So I eventually got to see him again and he was like, young man, come in, come in, come in, have a seat, have a seat. Like, what is happening right now? It's crazy. How did you know? Tell me, how did you know? I was like, sir, I was telling you at the time. This, this, this. Wait, okay, let me see the prediction. What did you, what, what, you see, you are looking at a chart. What kind of chart is that that you saw? <laughs> so I showed him my charts. And I always take screenshots of my charts. I always document my trades. For me, YouTube is actually a way for me to document my trades and keep myself accountable. So when I publish it and I state certain rules, it helps me stay accountable as well and it helps me document my trades as well and obviously I'm able to share my free, um, my sniper analysis with you guys. So, and then I showed him, he was like, are you serious? Wow, but, but it's like, well, this thing looks a bit complex. I'm like, I understand. He's like, you understand this thing? So what are you studying? I said, business, business management. Like, you're not even studying finance. I'm like, no, I'm studying business management. Long story short, guys. At this point, I didn't even need to say anything. He offered me. He was like, okay, can we make money from this thing? I'm like, yeah, of course we can make money from this. He said, how much did you make? I probably made about 100,000 pounds shot in oil. I was 21, guys. <laughs> Fuck it, man, I made 21. I made 100K pounds. Cool, cash. I was shot in oil. Meanwhile, my friends that were living with me in my flat in Coventry, they were working for some restaurant or doing this earning six pound fifty an hour, seven pound an hour. I stayed in my room, I made a hundred K cash, shot in oil, euro, I don't even want to go. The essence of this video is not to brag how much, I don't like to brag how much money I make from the market. I just feel it's a bit weird. Anyways, long story short, guys, once again, for those of you guys who want to get the Forex match request, the link is going to be down below. You know, obviously you're getting carried away with the story, but Invest in, your, invest in your education when it comes to the market, honestly, if you really want these things to come your way. So, let me round up the story so I can let you guys go. Because I have to catch my flight, actually. I'm actually traveling today. Um, so, long story short, he was like, can we make money from this thing? I'm like, yeah, 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 of course.
course we can make it. He's like, hey, show me. Do you make money? Show me. So I showed him. And he said, he made this money from me. Obviously, the money was changed to him. He was like, okay, I'm going to give you some money for you to trade for me. But I want to test you. How much do you think you can trade? Oh, someone asked you that kind of question. Someone asked you that kind of question. How much do you think you can trade? I was like, hmm. Then he said, what can you do with 10 million? I like, 10 million what? <laughs> like, 10 million euros, what can you do with 10 million euros? I was like, a lot. <laughs> so I now stepped in. So this is what, I mean, this I'm gonna round up the story here. So I now told him that he should relax because you see, once you start, once your investors are excited, now they wanna give you everything. They want you to, they want you to take all the money they have. So I had to now, Tell him, okay, so this is what I can do. Give me one million US dollars. Let's start from there. Let me see what I can do with this. Because at the same time, now you're taking on somebody's money. Okay? If anything goes wrong, it's a million dollars, man. Even if my family sold everything they had, they can't pay this guy back. <laughs> you get what I mean? So I couldn't lose it. Ten million, imagine 10 million. Whoa. I like, give me one million. And then, now, story not story, a uh, uh, lesson for those of you guys who are seeking for funding from investors. This is the most crucial part of the story. Always have a contract. In your contract, always state that you are, you, you are, you are allowed to have a maximum drawdown of minus 20%. This way, you give yourself some room to make mistakes. It's what they don't tell you. Because I see a lot of people they run into issues because of this. You should have a minus 20% drawdown in the sense that if, so this was the worth my contract stated, right? I, obviously they flew me back. They're like, all right, cool, 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 you can go. I, I hugged him, he shook me. We're best friends now, by the way. I, I can call him, he calls me all the time. I'm best friends with a billionaire just because I know how to trade top-down analysis. <laughs> That's what the Forex Mastery course can do for you. It can make you become friends with a billionaire. Link is going to be down below, by the way. So, so I flew back, drafted the contract, and I did something very smart on the contract. I stated that if, if I lose up to 20% of this money, it's a circuit breaker. I have to give him back his money. So, technically, he was investing 800K, worst case scenario. Because what usually happens to a lot of people when they take on funding is... Once things start to go south, they don't know when to stop. And then instead of handing over the initial capital or maybe some the initial capital less, maybe by 10 or 15 percent, they end up blowing everything. So for me, I always obviously I knew I wasn't going to lose his money, but this will help me. That helped me sleep well at night. And when I was promising returns, I told him the best I can do for you, sir. <clears throat> on this money is 35% for the whole year. Don't go there promising to flip anybody's account. If any investor tells you, listen, if any investor tells you, I want 15% monthly, flee. I see a lot of Ponzi, this is, sophisticated investors understand the principles of investing. Anybody asking you to give them 15% every month is a broke person, that's not an investor, that's a host, that is a nine to five person. You want to go for top tier. I speak about this. I speak about this in depth. So when you get the Forex Mastery course, there's also going to be the Forex Millionaire program, which is thirty nine dollars. If you're getting the Forex Mastery course, get both. It comes to one thirty nine because that course is actually dedicated to how to source for funds from investors. I go in detail in that what your equity curve should look like, blah blah blah. But this is just a story. So if you're getting the course, get both. Don't just get both because once you know how to trade, you need investors' money as well. So, you know, I, I, I set the expectations very low. At the time, I was doing 120%, 125% in two months, three months. Don't forget, the thing was shocking me. Like, the, the analysis was banging. My euro was, oh, it was an amazing time. So, moral of the story, guys, when you meet, an, when you meet a billionaire, meet an investor, don't ask for money don't beg for money don't try and show any proposal conversation hit them with something profound that they've never heard before show your intelligence okay always have 
the gold analysis at the top of your head, oil analysis, a couple of currency pairs analysis. Just know your stuff. But if you keep depending on signals and indicators, you can never know your stuff. Okay, know your stuff, know your onions, and then last but not the least, when you're promising returns, keep it very realistic. 40% a year is fantastic, maximum drawdown of minus 20%, and relax. You see, once I started trading his million, I was chilled. I set the trades the way I trade, you guys know. I set the trades and I go chill. And I, did, I had done 30% of his account by the end of that same month. I was done. So what everything it is I made on top of that was my money. That was exactly how I made the big box, big box in Forex. This is a long video. If you stay till the very end of this video, I do commend you for staying till the very end. But my big break came on top of that $1 million because by the end of that year, I had double that. I had done 80%, 86% of that money. So 860K paid out 350 so I was sitting on about, from his money, I was sitting on about 500K cash from my previous, from my own personal trading account. So I was probably pushing about personal in, personal in my bank account at the end of 2000. And so I started trading his account 2015. Um, so by the end of 2015, I was sitting with nothing less than maybe 800,000 pounds in my account. I was 22 guys. I was 22 years old. This 800,000 pounds is a million US dollars. So I can confidently state that I made 1 million US dollars before the age of 23, before the age of 25. Um, 22, I've done those figures. Maybe just a little bit below 1 million. I don't want to come on here and give you guys false figures. I, I can't really exactly remember the exact figure and the exact time, but yes, it was a lot of money. And that was that's pretty much my story. That is how I was able to get a billionaire to invest a million dollars in my forex trading business and that was my big break and this is why I can come on and not trade all the time because I know I have a significant amount of money capital to trade I have to protect it um, I have to protect it I have to nurture it I have to make sure I'm making the best trading decisions you know and stuff like that so guys once again i hope i've been able to shed light on this topic this video is about 37 minutes long it's very long for those of you guys who haven't grabbed the forex mastery course who want to learn how to do this educate yourself please okay the, the cost the prices of the course are going to go up very soon so do yourself a favor click the link below the link to the course is going to be down there and once again the link to my favorite broker at the moment is infinox capital guys please trade with them they're very nice guys um, the link is going to be down below um show me some support by trading with them i really appreciate it they're my very good friends i actually trade with them a significant amount of money and i'm able to sleep peacefully at night knowing fully well that my money is with them and my investors' monies are with them as well um, because they're very reliable, they're secure. Infinox Capital, the link is going to be down below. Click that link. But don't forget to grab the Forex Mastery course, most importantly, and prepare yourself for that big meeting. I wish you guys all the very best. I wish you millions and millions. I wish you meet an African billionaire like I did that can transform your life. It doesn't have to be a billionaire, to be honest. It can be any guy that has a lot of money. So once again, guys, take it easy and peace out.